Good morning, folks. This is Diamond from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project. Tuesday morning, 10, 12 a.m. Mountain Time, 9, 26, 2017. I'm redoing this video. I put one up last night, but there was a lag time. And it's important that you hear what I have to say. This video is about the Arctic ice nonsense. It started in the 20s or earlier. Here's a headline from the Associated Press. Arctic Ocean getting warm, seals vanish, and icebergs melt. It ramped up in the 80s with the greenhouse effect, could destroy all life here in the headline of the Milwaukee Sentinel. By December 12th of 20, 2007, I remember that uh, Christmas, they were saying that the Arctic ice could be gone by 2012. Gone in five years. Here, Arctic summers ice free by 2013. This comes from the Science Reporter in BBC News San Francisco. 2008, expert, Arctic polar cat may disappear this summer. Wrong. Here we have Al Gore entering the scene. 2009, polar ice cat may disappear by the summer of 2014. Al, it's 2017. More ice than it was in 1971. We'll get to that. And let's jump to, towards today here. 2016, Arctic could become ice-free for the first time in more than 100,000 years, claims leading scientist. Well, if this guy is a leading scientist and he doesn't think that the Arctic has been ice-free in 100,000 years, he may need to go back to school or just look at some more data. This is a ridiculous claim. And in fact, I think the Arctic might have been close to ice-free about in 1100 AD when the Vikings populated Greenland. But we'll look at the grass and you decide for yourself. So let's look at what their scare tactics are and their nonsense. Here is the Arctic ice extend in 1970 in the light blue, and then in 80, and in 1990, 2000, 2007. These are the predictions. It's all going away. We're all going to melt and die, folks. Here's the reality. Here's the 2017 Arctic ice extent at its maximum. It's in aquamarine. Overlaid is the 1971 ice extent. This is 1971 sea ice in olive drab. Clearly you can see there's more ice today than there was 46 years ago. I'll leave links to all this in the bottom so you can decide for yourself. In 2005, Lassen and Thiel, a paper came out where it showed sea ice cover in Iceland. It showed no ice in the medieval warm, probably no ice in this period here, and lots of ice during the Little Ice Age. If you come down in the graph here, we're here at this little spike here. This is where we're all going to die and the Arctic sea ice is leaving. Um, clearly it was lower here in 1920 to 1950, and in these periods, much earlier. I'll leave you links to all that. Here's the more modern paper, close correlation found between solar activity and Arctic Ocean climate. You could beef up on that. You could see where we are in the Arctic ice cycle here. You could see how much lower Arctic ice was in the past. Let's go look at the real data. I'm at the National Snow and Ice Data Center. And you can clearly see right here, this is live data. The 2017 area of ocean with at least 15% of sea ice is much greater than it was in 2012. Much greater. Let's go right to NASA. Here's NASA's, data, NASA's live data set. That's for September 10th. That's where we're at. This is the black mark for 2017. You can see that there's more ice than there was in 2016. There's also more ice than there was in 2007. There's also more ice than there was in 2012. There's also more ice than there was in 2015 currently. According to these, this information from NASA, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven years have less ice than right now. According to this graph, from NASA. I'll leave links to all this, folks. You can go look at it yourself. This comes from the Cryosphere Science Research Portal from NASA. <laughs> Let's talk about the polar bears. The polar bears are going to die, and we're all in the Arctic. It's killing them. I don't understand why anyone cares about polar bears becoming extinct. If they just spent five seconds of their life and look into the history of polar bears, they would find this data. 
1960, we estimated between five and 10,000 polar bears with a potential of up to 15,000 polar bears. Since then, we have gotten better data. People have been following it. Somewhere right in here is when they said all the polar bears are going to die. And the actual data is from 2013 to 2015, there was an increase of 6,000 polar bears. Polar bears are right now at the all-time high populations they've ever been since we even discovered them. So the polar bear nonsense is absolute nonsense. So what's going on with NOAA? How can they convince us that the sea ice is going away? And why does everyone believe them? Well, they believe NOAA and NASA because of graphs like this which start in 1978 and go to present. And they show a clear downward trend of sea ice going away at astronomical rates that's going to kill everyone on the planet. Here's another uh, ver version of that from the National Cell and Ice Data Center. That was one of the places we just visited to show that sea ice is in fact higher than it has been in years. Notice this upward trend here. They put a downward line here though to scare you. This is the 79 to 2013 data. Remember that. If you guys don't know about Tony Heller and Real Climate Science, a.k.a. Steve Goddard, he recently did a video where he put together the old data, which seems to be missing, and the new data, the data that we're getting right here. And it's amazing because it clearly shows that sea ice was lower from 1920 to 1960 than it has been in the present. And if they added that data, the graph would not go straight down like this or like this, but in fact would look something different, like up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down and up, like solar cycles. Now you remember we talked about the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation. This is the actual sea surface temperatures of the Atlantic, and it goes in a 60-year cycle. There's 30 up, 30 down, warm and cold phases, warm and cold, warm and cold. If you go look at the data, it matches the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation perfectly. And they haven't had to hide this data because this doesn't mean anything to global warming alarmists. It's just the sea surface temperature in the Atlantic. It has nothing to do with hurricanes, how warm the temperature of the surface of the ocean is. So these idiots are absolutely lying to you. And when I mean idiots, I mean NASA and NOAA. NOAA's graphs now start here, so they show a downward trend to scare the shit out of you. And here's their newest graph, which is an absolute lie, because all this data here prior to 1971 is bullshit. And you can prove it, because we still have the data. We still have the graphs, NOAA. We still have the graphs. You're lying. This is total nonsense, and the way they get away with this is putting these two words in. The Arctic sea ice extent, standardized anomalies. That means we lied to you and fixed it. If you look at this, it's the actual sea ice extent. This has not been standardized because they only showed you a small group of data where they could put a line straight down. Had they shown you all the data, they couldn't do that. It would have to go up and down and up and down, just like the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation does, and just like the sea ice does. In 1930, we had the lowest sea ice, and we can confirm that right here, because the Atlantic was the warmest. In 1890, we probably had low sea ice, and we probably had the most sea ice in 1970. According to the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation and the temperature of the Atlantic Ocean, it was the coldest in 1970, and you go back to the actual data, and in 1970, there's this big peak right here. This, these points are huge amounts of sea ice. Here's the sea ice amount. There was a huge peak here in the 65 to 70 area of sea ice. And that would make sense according to the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation because the Atlantic was cold and sea ice can grow. <coughs> so Noah is blatantly lying with this graph. And I don't know how they get away with it. Let me just show you some of the recent adjustments in temperature. And those words like standardized or normalized or blah, 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 it means lying. In just five years, they lost 
Here's point two, point three, point four degrees on global temperature was lost in five years from NASA. This is the data they had in 2001. This is the data they changed it to. And the reason they did that is to make it look like it was warming more. And you can see after this flexure here, I call this the flexure point, the 1970 point. I just showed you the obfuscation graphs. It can go straight up because then they low, they make it higher and lower. Do you see how they tweak this? They bring it down on one side and up on the other. By doing this, you get more of a straight up. You get more of a lie. If you start your graph right here, whew, because it's funny, it, here's the actual sur surface temperature from 79 to present to last month. And if you start at zero in 1980, where it was, to today, the deviation is only 0.2 degrees. 0.3 I'll give you. That's not what they're showing here. They're showing an absolute lie. 0.2... 0 0.4, 0 0.6, it's a degree here. It's gone up a degree in the same time the actual data doesn't show that. This would have to be up off the graph here. I guess they pick this point and add it a little, and they pick this point and add a little and say that's the truth. If you know how to read a graph, you know what the truth is. Because this standard deviation has a plus or minus of 0.2 degrees everywhere which means this can come down 0.2 and this can come up 0.2 which puts you straight on this line which shows almost no temperature rise it's stalling out and we're about to fall down off the chart here folks and let me show you why we're going to fall off the chart because the past is the key to the future these are the solar cycles the major grand minima and maxima over the last 4,000 years Here's a grand solar minimum, here's a grand solar minimum, here's a grand solar minimum, here's another grand solar minimum, and another grand solar minimum at a periodicity of 400 years. <clears throat> and we're about to go into the next grand solar minimum, straight off the chart here. See these peaks? We've just peaked. Notice how there's dub a double peak on some of these? Peak, 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 peak. Are you seeing a pattern? And let's go see what happens in these grand solar minimum drop-offs, like the one we're about to go into. Huh, the Miocene civilization collapsed here. Hmm. The Ro Rome collapsed here. The great migration of Goths, Huns, and Vandals begins. The last Western Roman emperor deposed by the Germans down here. Starvation, extreme cold, and a third of the European population died in 784 down here. These are grand solar minimums. The Great Famine and Black Death happened during this one. And here, look at this spike, like the one we're in. The Vikings settled Greenland. They populated and were prolific. Then they disappeared, and the Black Death killed everyone. Glaciers grew and destroyed villages, the Maunder Minimum. And we're back in our calm, warm, quiet spike, and we're about to fall off. We're falling off greater than any of these fall-offs, folks, in history. There is data to suggest that we are going into a very deep cold cycle somewhere down here. So be prepared. If you don't know about the Deplorable Science, Climate Science blog by Tony Heller, I'll give you links to this. It's great. You can spend a whole afternoon looking at all the nonsense going on here. <clears throat> the crude temperature fraud, the sea level fraud, disappearing glaciers, temperature corruption, ice-free Arctic forecasts, everything, stuff that I show you. You can get it here, folks, if you need it. This is a great resource. I recommend you come look at it. Get familiar with the temperature fraud. Google the differences in temperature. Do your own research. Try to find your own data sets and see how they've changed them through time. This is a very dangerous thing that's happening on our planet when the systems that claim to be helping us and running our countries are obfuscating the truth, changing the data, lying, and then publishing it for the public to use. Scientists use this data, which means that all science in the last few decades is complete garbage with regards to climate science. 
So there's a lot to be redone. The, the children in our future, our future children, the kids, the the people that are going to lead our country are being lied to in the classroom about this garbage information that's not true. What they need to know is the truth about the history. If we knew the true history of our planet, we would learn from our mistakes and we wouldn't let things like this happen to the population. But the global elites don't give a fuck about you and they're waiting for this to fall off so that they don't have to take care of you anymore. They hope we starve. They got their bunkers. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to our channel and share this with like-minded individuals. Guys, be safe.